Hello there, it's Ed again. I feel the need to cover some basic fundamental information because the repetitive nature of information that I keep saying that is nowhere near correct uh, is well, it's bugging me. So let's start from the beginning and make sure everybody has a firm grasp on what we're trying to accomplish. Today's topic is sensible heat ratio. If you don't know what sensible heat ratio is, how in the world can you understand how an air conditioner effectively conditions a space? That's what it really comes back to. And to me, it's an indication of if you understand how a system really works. Uh, fundamentally, we need to understand this stuff to diagnose problems, compl uh, comfort complaints, etc. So what's the difference here what we're talking about? I talk about nominal capacity and actual capacity quite frequently. Nominal is the number on the side of a piece of equipment, typically in the model number, that's irrelevant. Just because it says an 024 or uh, 048 doesn't necessarily mean that's the capacity that our system is able to produce or more correctly put remove. So in this example that I'm showing up here, and once again, I started off without having a highlighter on and I got it now, I have nominal capacities and 24,000 to 12,000 BTUs per ton, uh, that whole deal. We see nominal at 24, that would be a two ton unit, this would be a three ton unit. It's not uncommon to see a two ton unit that doesn't make two tons. So the difference between nominal numbers and actual numbers can be uh, minimal or it can be pretty substantial. Not at all uncommon to see a three ton piece of equipment that in real life produces even less than what's on the screen here. Not uncommon to see 31 or 32,000 BTUs of capacity coming out of a three ton piece of equipment. We gotta stop saying tons. We gotta look at real numbers and differentiate between the two. When I say differentiate between the two, we're talking about kinds of BTUs. Every system is gonna have three capacities. One of those capacities is going to be sensible. One of those capacities is going to be latent. And then we're going to see the two of them added together, and that's going to give us our total. Way too many systems get sized or selected based off of total BTUs. And the sensible and latent gains are not entirely accounted for. And we end up with people that are complaining. We end up with people that have legitimate complaints about their system not doing what it should be. And what it should be doing is, at a minimum, maintaining 75 degrees, 50% relative humidity if you're in a green grass climate, uh, 55 if you're humid, and 45 if uh, you're in an arid environment. So sensible BTUs, I think everybody's familiar with sensible BTUs. Sensible BTUs in this little diagram right here, we see a temperature rise across the piece of equipment. It raises the temperature, it, that's sensible heat, or it drops the temperature if we're talking about in a, a central air conditioning system. It turns the thermostat on and off. That is what controls the system. I mean, sensible BTUs and a traditional thermostat that we see in most houses, that's it, right? Straight up, that's how it works. Latent BTUs, that's the water coming off the coil, hopefully out the white pipe and, you know, dripping out onto the curb or wherever it's going in your yard. We have to be able to select equipment that covers both. And if you're not looking at each one of them individually, well, you're missing part of the, the, the idea. Uh, the other thing we need to know is that we, or when we manipulate our airflow, we can manipulate that uh, sensible and latent capacity or what we started off talking about was the sensible heat ratio. So let's explain that sensible heat ratio thing. And this is the, the most fundamental explanation that I've come up with. And I've been using this uh, explanation that you see in this slide here i don't know if i can say 10 years but it's probably pretty close to it so everybody knows what a window air conditioner is and it's a vapor compression cycle dx cooling blah 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 we have a piece of equipment right here and for simplicity's sake i'm going to use it to explain the sensible heat ratio again my example is that window unit and i'm using a nice easy round number 
of 10,000 because I can do the math uh, quite simply with 10,000 BTUs. It's operating at a sensible heat ratio of 0.75. And I selected that number because if you look in the extended performance data for your manufacturer's equipment, if you take your favorite 13, 14, 15 sear unitary split system and run it at that magic 400 CFM per ton that we all seem to cling to, or too many people seem to cling to, that's the sensible heat ratio it's going to produce. What does that really mean? And it might be a point or two higher, a point or two lower, but for explanation purposes, that's a sensible heat ratio we're going to end up with at 400 CFM per ton. It means that that 10,000 BTU piece of equipment is going to remove 7,500 sensible BTUs from the space that it's trying to condition. It means that 2,500 BTUs of that 10,000 BTUs of capacity is going to be used to take the evaporator coil down below dew point and condense moisture out of the air. Now, if we're dealing with a unitary split, it's going to go down the white pipe and into a pump or drip outside. That window unit on your screen, that condensate is probably going to end up in a little a trough and it's going to get flung into the condenser where it evaporates and they get a little tiny bit of additional efficiency out of the window units with that. Manual S gives us guidance and it tells us if we manipulate the airflow, our sensible heat ratio changes. What that means is if we do more air, more air is defined as greater than 400 CFM per ton as per the manufacturer's extended performance data, we're going to get a higher sensible heat ratio. So this 0.75 number is going to increase. We're going to get an increase in sensible capacity. We're going to get an increase in total capacity. We're going to get a, a, a decrease in latent capacity and our efficiency is going to go up slightly. The opposite is true when we move less air, and less air is going to be defined as less than 400 CFM per ton. Some manufacturers publish 350, 400, and 450. Some do 375, 400, and what would the next one be? 475. It doesn't matter. However the manufacturer publishes it, that's what we go by. Or we select based off of that information is a better way to say that. But if we move less air across that evaporator coil, we're going to do less total BTUs, we're going to do less sensible BTUs, and we're going to see an increase in latent capacity. Something to keep in mind also is the home has a sensible heat ratio the same way that a piece of equipment will. And we manip the, manipulate this, the home's sensible heat ratio by infiltration. So if you make a house tighter, sensible heat ratio is going to go up. If you make a house looser, it's going to go down. And you calculate your home sensible heat ratio by taking your total gain and dividing it into your sensible gain. And that will give you the same way but, or similar to you take your equipment's total capacity and divide it into its sensible capacity. And that's how you solve for that sensible heat ratio number. So I keep talking about the sensible heat ratio and a, a performance data and everything. Wait till you see, see the next slide. In the previous slides, I've mentioned uh, manufacturers extended performance data multiple times. And what you have in front of you right now is some manufacturers extended performance data. This happens to be a uh, Frederick, I think it is, might be Coleman. It's a York product. It really doesn't matter what it is, but it shows an O24 air conditioner. So it's a nominal capacity of two tons. Doesn't mean it's gonna make 24,000 BTUs as we alluded to earlier. Same way I have a two and a half ton nominal size coil. It's not a two and a half ton coil, and I'm going to shout it from the mountaintops. That is not a two and a half ton coil, no matter how you want to slice it. It might have a nominal size of two and a half tons, but when we look at the actual capacity of it, we're going to see that it's nowhere near 30,000 BTUs. So that combo right there is whatever the numbers are published at your design conditions down here. That's a real good way to put it. So over here, I had the 850 get squared. I hit the buttons out of order. Uh, again, I'm not going to go back and redo this one. 850 represents 375, uh, 375 CFM per nominal ton. Uh, 800 is going to be the uh, 400 CFM per nominal ton, and 750 is going to be 375. 
phenomenal ton. We have the 850 underneath a 75 degree indoor dry bulb, right? That indoor dry bulb and indoor wet bulb are these columns across here. 75 degrees at a 62 degree wet bulb, that gives us 75 degrees at 50% relative humidity, or approximately. It's not dead on, but it's close enough for our purposes right here. At 85 degree outdoor temperature, you might be working in a market where it's 95 or 105. Use the correct column. Technically, in my market, we're a 90 degree outdoor temperature. So what I should be doing is taking the information at 85 and 95, adding them together and dividing by two or interpolating it. But for explanation purposes, I'm just going to stick with 85 degree entering air. This O24 matched with an O30 produces 23,400 BTUs of total capacity at 85 degrees when we're moving 850 CFM across it. If you do the math and the way you use the extended performance data, it, we're, we're getting total capacity here, sensible capacity in this column. And over here, we have to do some math and it tells us that we got 4,400 BTUs of latent capacity. As I said before, when we slow the air down, we're gonna see our total drop and check total dropped, sensible dropped. We went from 19 to 18.5. And I said, we're gonna see an increase in latent capacity. Check, it, it takes place. It's how an air conditioner works. Over here, we dropped our airflow down to 750. We see a reduction in our total capacity. We see a reduction in our sensible capacity. And again, we see an increase in our latent capacity. That folks is how an air conditioner works. This is specific information for the manufacturer telling you exactly how many BTUs it's going to remove, both sensible and latent. From this, we can do proper equipment selection. So I don't know how much more blunt I can be with this, but you don't have to use rules of thumb. Uh, you should stop talking about equipment in tons only and forget about the idea that uh, a ton is 12,000 BTUs in real life in theory in conversation uh, sure but if you really want to know what a piece of equipment does capacity wise look it up uh, just to to finish this thought i'm looking at 23,000. forget it nobody's going to run an air conditioner above 400 cfm everybody's going to run at 400 cfm because they're not on on the the bus yet so let's say that this combo here does do 23,200 total BTUs. Do it in a 105 degree environment, it just dropped down to 20,000 BTUs. We're at like 1.6 something, maybe 1.7 tons. Stop calling it two tons. All right, we can go by model numbers, uh, again, when we're researching prices and things of that nature, but we got to look at actual capacities and compare it to the gain on the structure. Got to do a load calc, got to do proper equipment selection, got to do proper duct design to get systems to do what they're supposed to do. See you later.